Russell spoke about selling players before we could buy any Glenn. We're mm. coming into, the, into a week before the kickoff of the season. Do, do, do you feel business could potentially be done this week? Or do you think it's be? It looks very difficult because there's dead wood to be moved on, isn't there? There is. It's when managers make statements like that, you you never really know if they're telling the truth or whether they're playing games or you know and and trying to get whoever to loosen the purse strings and, and things like that or they're because I, I don't really see what good it does other than setting expectations for fans you know because if if you say you've got to sell before you can buy that gives out the the impression to a i don't know a trabs on sport for example that we're 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 getting pretty desperate so we may we may deal at a lower value it's it's um it, it's a strange one. I mean, we, we all know that we haven't got loads of money. We all know that, you know, despite playing yesterday, tall Paul, he, he's not really wanted. We all know that Bella Kotchap wants to go. And these are players that could fetch 20 million quid between them. And, and that would make things a lot easier, it, especially if you're chasing players that, you know, like we've been talking about Matt O'Reilly for ages. If we sign him, that's going to cost 20 million plus. And it, it's... You know, we could obviously do with the um, the money coming in to to have a better chance of making that a reality. Unfortunately, you know, we've had to spend forty million to keep the squad to keep the team as good as it was last year with Howard Bellis and Downs. We've signed a couple of sort of like cheap centre halves. Sugawara was relatively cheap. Charlie Taylor was a free. That you know, we do uh, and Adam Lallana as well. Who can forget about that? But um, yeah, I mean, we unfortunately the. As we kind of hinted at earlier, the, the places where we need to sign players are the expensive parts of the pitch. So if if we're looking to sign a number nine striker or a creative midfielder, we're going to have to spend the money, and we we do need to get these players out the door to make that uh, more of more likely. I would say. Yeah, it looks that way to me. And 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 the and the chat around the ground yesterday, I was, I was chatting to fans uh, from my channel, and and, and everybody was talking about goalkeeper, striker, and creative midfielder, which is going to cost money. There's no doubt about that. Russell spoke about bringing in character, Steve, over talent. We had a lot of bad eggs last time around in the Premier League, in my opinion. I may be wrong in saying that, but I thought there was a lot of bad eggs in the dressing room. Do you feel like a team built on character and unity is going to be just enough? Um, no. Um, I mean, you look at look at Luton. For for that, they were they were a team full of unity and they got relegated. Um, and it would have been very comfortably relegated if Everton and Forest hadn't had points deducted. So, no, I mean, you've got to combine it with talent as well. Um, and I think ultimately, you, I mean, no no sane Premier League football. I mean, I know we're talking about a league that um, has Chelsea and their current um, transfer nonsense going on, <laughs> but no sane Premier League football club uh, signs, signs players solely because they're um, good in the dressing room. They've got to have they've got to be able to add something on the pitch. Um, and yeah, I think we're, we're looking at, as you say, those, those key positions of goalkeeper, um, either attacking midfielder or wide, wide um, sort of winger uh, and centre forward. I think those, those positions are key. And I think in terms of characters, I think you can always, I think it's quite easy to to work out which players don't fancy it. Um, you look at where they've played before, what their backgrounds are in in that sense. Have they? Do they have any experience of having to kind of grind things out? Um, if they haven't, then you probably can't really make a make a judgment one way or the other on on those those sort of players. So I think you're probably going to be looking at players who have been in our sort of situation before. Um, but players possibly with a point to prove. So it's, I mean, you you do then naturally reduce the um, the price of those sort of players, but you're probably then kind of sort of pokey around in sort of bargain basement uh, baskets and things like that, aren't you? It's you're not you're not necessarily going to be getting uh, someone who's going to come in and, and make a huge difference. But you just you just want those those sort of little sort of I mean, it's horrible sort of Dave, Dave Brailsford uh, marginal gains stuff, isn't it? You you want someone who can just make make that little fractional difference in in key moments. 
Um, and I mean, from what from what we've seen, Raritan Diaz looks like he might be that sort of player. Um, mm, his yeah. record for Sheffield United in a god awful team last year, um, second half of the season when they were absolutely doomed, and he still still came up with um, came up with good numbers. Um, that bodes very well, I think. Um, but we need we need more of the same. Um, yeah, Adam Armstrong, as I mentioned, was a slight concern. And of course, we've seen his record in the Premier League. Maybe the system that we're playing gets more out of him, um, obviously, as it did last season. But um, he's still got that sort of blot on his copybook, if you like, of two seasons with, what, four or five goals. Four goals so yeah. it's, it's difficult um, in that sense. You've got a kind of almost trust your instincts one way or the other on that, I suspect. And um, yeah, suck it and see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see, th- see how it goes. Do you think goes. he can step up, Steve? Do you think he can step up next season, Adam Armstrong? I don't know. I mean, the thing is, I mean, the, the, the goalposts don't move. They're the same size regardless of what level you play at. And if he's getting into the positions and we, and we feed him the chances, then sure, why not? But the problem is that... He's going to have few. He's going to have a lot fewer chances at this level than he did last. So that's that's the key. Whether whether a um, I don't know, sort of one in three chance conversion. I, I can't remember the numbers in terms of how many shots on target he managed last season. Um, but if a one in three conversion can be can be sort of converted up to, up to the Premier League, then yeah, fine. He can get. He can kind of get Shea Adams numbers of sort of eight, nine, ten goals, which yeah, I mean that that that's kind of plugs one gap we had from uh from last time. But obviously everyone remembers we finished bottom last time. We didn't score enough goals and we conceded too many. So you've kind of got to still go one step further. And I think that's where that's where we need to be a little bit smarter. Um it might it may well be a case that we're waiting for a deadline day signing where we're getting a loan in from a bigger club who have someone um, that they're not going to play and, but will possibly make a difference for us. So that's, I think that's, that's probably what we're, what we're going to be looking out for. I imagine. Um, I mean, it sounds like there's possibility of a goalkeeper situation being resolved with Sam Johnston being available from Crystal Palace. That fee looks, the fee of 10 million quid looks perfectly reasonable I think for what should be a current England goalkeeper um so that's a that I think that would be a massive upgrade on on what we have at the moment I mean Alex McCarthy for all that um you can say that he deserved a new contract after his performances in the run-in and getting us promoted um we've also seen in pre-season why um he wasn't getting in the team in the first place the passing out from Mm. the back in like just in the just in these two home games um, we've given up chances in our penalty area by him passing the ball more or less straight to the opposition or or under hitting a pass meant meant for a teammate so there there is a there is a sort of big upgrade to be done there i think um and if we can get that done for relatively good money then then yeah i think we should be should be jumping all over that really but the striker situation and the attacking midfielder, I mean, I don't know if the O'Reilly thing's really likely now, given the um, interest from other clubs. I mean, I've even seen Spurs linked with him, which, I mean, if, Sp- if Spurs get their, um, stick their feet in the door, then then we might as well walk away now, because um, we'll have absolutely no chance at the, the fee and wages that, that they'd be able to offer. But um, it's, yeah, it's, it's frustrating, but unfortunately our position in the pecking order kind of dictates dictates where we are and of course the the reckless spending two years ago is still we're still pay, effectively paying for it because that's yeah. now impacting our um the profit and sustainability regulation sort of levels are are impacted heavily by that so yeah we've we've got to get some get some cash in the door before we can look at uh, look at bringing more players in, unfortunately. Alfie, do you feel business could be done this week as we head into the, the game against Newcastle? It's obviously going to be different, difficult. Like Steve said, it, you know, a lot of fans are calling for players and are demanding players, but it isn't that easy, is it? It is difficult. They're trying to run a business here as well, aren't they? And like Steve said, they are paying for some pretty d- disastrous transfer windows. 
Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the, the, the PSR rules are the, the kicker. Um, something like 150 million loss over three years, and they Jeez. lost 87 million pounds um, last summer. They lost, I think, 20 million pounds, something like that, before. And obviously, they're in the championship last year, so the, the money is not there to spend in terms of regulations. Um, but Russ Mine, I spoke to him on, um, on after the game on Saturday, and he said that, yep, they could still bring in one or two um, by the by next week but he didn't sound that hopeful on it he said that things have been close and haven't happened this summer and equally things have come out of nowhere so we should have to wait and see but um i don't think it's a case where they can't buy anybody for the rest of the summer unless they sell i think there's 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 got to be room in there somewhere to do something i hope so because they need a few things but like steve has alluded to you know players like bella Kodchap, who seems to be edging a little bit closer to a move back to germany um that would be absolutely ideal whether that's 15 20 million pounds whatever it is That'd be brilliant. Obviously, Paul Nuachi, I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit more, but you know, he's not part of the plan, so to say. He's, he's only been played because no one's tried to buy him or no one's given us a, a proper you know, fee for him. Um, he, he's not in Russell Martin's plans. But while he's here and while you're paying him his wages, you might as well use him. He's obviously something a little bit different. If they could sell him, that'd be great. If a big offer comes in for Charlie Alcaraz, I'm, I'm so sure they'd be willing to talk about that as well. And then Cameron Sulemana, is it seems like he's going to be stuck here just because... Um, He's injured again and nobody wants to buy him because he's done nothing for two years, which is totally fair enough. Why would you? So that's a bit of a shame, but you know, maybe things will happen. Russell Mine still wants people to come in for Newcastle. He wants additions in the next week. We just have to wait and see. But if they don't, I think it's pretty obvious what their best 11 is. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, obviously, it needs to be improved, but I think there is a bit of stability to be had in the fact that I think the 11 is really clear. You know, the only debate is do you start in a 4-3-3 or a 3-5-2, and that would be Jack Stevens or Sam Adozi starting. Um, I think I'd go for the, the Jack Stevens option. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see.